Okay, but we do great things, I think. Um, well, maybe one day you can tax it. I thought that this statement might catch your attention. And for those who don't know who said this, it was Michael Faraday when he was questioned by uh, William Gladstone. What is the use for what you are doing here when he was searching, looking into the new uh, basic science of electricity? And he was absolutely right. One day, they could tax it. <laughs> now, why could he be so confident? Well, take a humble candle. At the time of uh, Faraday, the research on the handle candle had really brought this technology forward. Everything was working well. But you cannot imagine that any applied research on this candle would give you the light bulb. It's impossible. You need basics and you need fundamental science to do that. But also fundamental science doesn't give you the light bulb itself. It gives you the idea about the electricity, the understanding of electricity. You need then applied research together with basic science. And here I must say that people often speak of basic science and applied science as if we have a choice. We don't have a choice. We need both of them. They, the two form part of a virtuous circle which, if we interrupt it, it's, our, it's at our peril. We should certainly not do that. We need both if we are, we are, are going to lay the foundations for the futures for the future, so we need both in 2011 as well as beyond. And I want to show that here again. Take, take this scene, typical day somewhere in the world, actually it's my hometown, Stuttgart. There's a lot of science in it, which sometimes took a long time from fundamental science to application, and sometimes it was pretty, pretty fast. Einstein to GPS phone, it took 100 years, roughly. Now, from the World Wide Web, which we needed at CERN, and which we invented at CERN for, as our communication tool, it took just a few years. So there's a huge difference between fundamental science and the time, of its, uh, time difference and its application. And there is a huge amount of science in here. Look at that again. I don't want to point to everything, but there are mobile phones, artificial hips, bike frame, carbon fiber, LED display, intelligent credit cards, whatever, digital camera, artificial lenses. Everywhere here, at the beginning of everything, there was a critical mind, a, a mind which was eager to learn thing, something, and therefore it was fundamental science at the beginning. And it's now thanks, I think, thanks to the web, that the time difference between the nowadays candles and the new things might be shorter because we have much faster information exchange for this. And I would like to highlight one more example of the basic applied science cycle from CERN itself. In the 1970s, that means roughly 40 years ago, together with the uh, Geneva's main hospital, CERN engaged to build the first PET scanners. And by the way, PET, the P, stands for positron. And the positive one is antimatter. And antimatter was postulated 80 years ago. So it took from 80 years ago to 40 years ago that antimatter, which was basic science, has become used in hospitals. And today we use it all the time. Okay, so in the 90s, 10 years later, we developed imaging crystals, like the ones which you can see here, for our big experiments which we need in order to do our fundamental science. And these ones you can also use in PET scanners. So they are nowadays used in PET scanners. In the 90s, we developed electronics to read out these crystals in high magnetic fields. So that means today you can not only use it in PET, but you, you can also use it in MRI. So there's a direct spin-off from fundamental science, for example, to medical application. What this story tells us is that while basic science drives innovation, it's equally true that applied science fuels basic research. The two just belong together. It's a constant interplay between these two, and this really drives us forward, and that is my main message here. 
Now we have a problem because once particle physicists have developed a technique that suits our needs, we stop there. We use it. We are not the ones who, who do then the step from R&D to application. That needs somebody else. But with the results from these people, somebody else, we then can use it for our fundamental research again. Now, if, in, if you want to do fundamental research and also applied research, I think you have to share your knowledge. Now, sharing knowledge is in the DNA of particle physicists. At CERN here, we are connected to many, many states all over the world. So we are in a global collaboration. We have 97 nationalities registered for, on our campus. Now comes my usual joke. Half the United Nations were in Belgium. Okay, it was not so good. Okay. <laughs> okay, but sharing knowledge is something which is absolutely important and with which you cannot do things in the future. What is the nice thing about such science, fundamental science, this is the age distribution of our people doing research at CERN. Well, you find even people 86. But the main thing is here. You see, 25, 26, that's the peak. And we have at our big accelerator, we have probably 2,500 PhD students worldwide doing their PhDs. And of course, they are not only ending up in academia, they go everywhere in all fields, be it applied research, be it private enterprises, be it public sector. That's fantastic. Now, I guess my time is over. Yeah. What? Three minutes? Oh, I have to slow down. <laughs> so, but what does all this mean for the Science Agenda 2011? Well, and if I have to leave you with one short message to take from this, then I would say, basic science is the ultimate driver of innovation. Without basic science, there is no science to apply. As you have seen, basic science attracts the brightest mind, young minds to science as a whole, from all over the world, providing talent for future innovation. So, if we have to invest our resources, basic science or applied science, then the answer can only be basic science and applied science. The both are really together. Our prosperity depends on it. And this is what I would like to leave you with. Basic science drives innovation. Innovation fuels basic science, and they both together form a virtuous circle. Thank you.